Okay, I'm not, probably not going to be able to get through this video without laughing too much. We are now at what I consider to be the funniest set of clauses in the New Testament. There might be funnier ones, but I haven't ever encountered them yet. Okay, I'll try to be serious, but I might just spit up over my computer. Okay, hutoi meta tu anu pole me susin. That's pretty serious. And they will make it, it's it's sort of out of order. When Greek does it this way, they're stressing the last part of the clause. And with the lamb they wore. It's almost Hebraistic. Except that Hebrew, even Hebrew will put the verb first and the object or subject next. So this is really supposed to be maybe you put hutoi in front of it but this should have been at the beginning of the sentence but see he's timing it he's timing it for the event that's prophetic because by putting it last he's specifying the battle the warring of Tours and Poitiers okay so it's unexpected wording because He's leading to a particular event that that word warring is needed to mention. Now what's hysterical about it is that the Christians are already warring with the Lamb too. Okay? They're warring with each other over the proper definition of God. There's a definite East-West split at this point. In the West it's all separate kingdoms. But they all have some kind of, you know, off-again, on-again loyalty to the Pope in Italy. At the same time, the Pope in Italy is trying to keep tabs and, and connection with the Byzantine Emperor. And is calling him the Emperor. And as far as he's concerned, the West is just a bunch of little barbarian kingdoms who happen to have a good enough amount of money that he wants to be nice to. But... Other than that, he really doesn't want to cater to him that much. Until this happens. And then it's like, ooh. They turn back the Muslims. And I'm on the same border now. They're on the southern part of my belly as Italy. I think I need these guys in the west who turn back the Muslims. See, I need to be nice to them. That's what the popes in Rome are thinking. Okay, now you think about that for a minute. We got Byzantine. Think of a map of Europe and Asia and the Middle East with the big boot of Italy sticking down. You're in that big boot of Italy sticking down. That's kind of a distance from France and Spain. That's kind of a distance from Byzantium and Byzantium has some of the territory of Italy that it claims it it rules rather than you. And so there's a sort of east-west schism problem there and the east ideas of do doctrine are different from the west and so there's always a little bit of tension there. And wouldn't it be nice if you could play the West off the East in the name of these Arabs fighting against the Lamb? You see where the Crusades are going to end up getting started? So, ooh, that's a good idea that we can... We can have neither one of them actually controlling us in Italy, and they'll both want, want a crusade for Christ because of these Arabs that are warring against the Lamb. And they're pretty powerful on both sides. What we don't want is we don't want the West and the East to get along with each other. We want them to need us, the guys in Italy, for their own support. 
so that we can buffer ourselves between them and they will continue to not like each other and continue to need us. That's the power game going on in here. They're using the Muslim threat and they genuinely are afraid of it. They're using the Muslim threat to think, oh, we can kill two birds at one stone. We can keep the East and the West in between and needing us as the go-between. Between them and to, you know, in the name of Christ. Because the Arabs are going to come up against Christ and we're right in the middle and you want to defend us, don't you? Right? Because they already invented that Peter lie a long time ago. Peter died in Babylon. He didn't die in Rome. So think about that. Pretend you're a pope in Italy in between the two powers, two big empires brewing, and you got the Muslims at your underbelly. So now you begin to understand the lead-in for what happens here. There's got to be some kind of change in power as a result of this victory, and there is. Charles Martel is a so-called prime minister, mayor of the palace is what they call him, for one of the Merovingian dynasts, and the other ones are even weaker still, and he sort of consolidates his power amongst the dynasts, and he ends up being more powerful than all of them, especially because he's riding on his victory at the Battle of Tours, a.k.a. Poitiers. Okay, so, and the, the lamb will conquer them, yeah? And the lamb is in two parts now. West, Charles Martel. East, Leo III. And they're both feeling pretty good right now. Okay? In fact, they're feeling so good, this is where it gets funny. I first got to translate it so you see it. And the lamb, okay, conquers them. Here it's the two sides that are, the lamb is empowering to conquer them, the Arabs, because, this is where it gets really funny, there's no definite article here, there's supposed to be, but there isn't, to stress the quality of Jesus Christ. Curias Curion. King, a Lord of Lords, okay, he is, and King of Kings. So this is King singular, this is King plural, this is Lords plural, this is Lord singular, and in between you got just Esten, he is, and Kai. So pretty much any thing that happens in this sentence except in here it's going to have to do with Jesus Christ correct? because it's king of kings lord of lords that's a lot of syllables right? unless it's happening at Hoti or Esten Kai it's related to him right? let you think about that because remember we're talking about one syllable per year all those years in between most of them have to relate to him there are only like S, Din, Kai, three, four, five syllables that wouldn't, out of 19. So what happens? This is 754. This is 753. This is 752. This is 751. This is 750. 749. In 749, the son of Charles Martel, who's called Pepin the Short, sends a little request to the Popey guy. I forget which Pope it is, and says, You know, we just won this big battle at Tours. And we're really willing power, so should the Merovingian king be our lord? You see the wit? Should he be our lord? That's happening at that syllable right there. That's cute, huh? 
Now Pope is thinking, oh wow, I'm between a rock and a hard place because that's a duly authorized king. I say no, and that duly authorized king I'm putting down in favor of this guy who really wants to be king instead of him. So which lord do I want to make lord? See the joke? Now here's the funny part. The counts all differ as to how much time elapses. This is 749, 750, 751. Some time elapsed. Here at 751, Pepin, I don't know if he's impatient or what, but according to some accounts, he gets the Franks to elect him king of them without the Pope. But 752, 753, well, 750, let's see, 749, 50, 51. That's when he gets himself elected. 752, 753, there's another little delay with a sort of acquiescence by. And depending on who you talk to, because the counts are all kind of contradictory. In 754, Am I going to say this without laughing? In 754, the Pope makes a trip. Or Pepin makes a trip. I forget how it goes. But the Pope crowns Pepin king of the Franks. He replies to him says, Yeah, you should be king instead of the Merovingian guy. And they get the Merovingian guy. That's probably why there's a delay. They get the Merovingian guy to agree to retire to a monastery without being blinded. That's kind of nice because they usually blinded you to do that. And now here Pepin the Short. <laughs> See he's short. The rule, the full word is Kaiser. <laughs> but he's Pepin the Short so he's the short Kai. Not really Kaiser. Just Kai. He's crowned. By Pope. Who is making him therefore king of the other kings in the Merovingian dynasty that's just getting replaced because what ends up happening and during this period of time is that because he knows he's going to be crowned or because he is crowned they then therefore take over all the other kings that were part of the Merovingian dynasty that had been divided up into like four parts and then they have to battle with all the other mayors of the palace that were also interested in taking over <laughs> So it's like, who's the king of which kings? And the kings of the king, the king of the kings is finally Pepin by the end of this. But he's crowned here. <laughs> and he's short. And the word is short. It's supposed to be Kaiser and it's Kai. And you had all these other words for Lord. And you have all these other words for kings. But he's not crowned there. No, he's crowned here. So he's not part of the king. He's not part of the Lord. He's not part of the Lord. He's not part of the Lords. He's not part of the guy, the real Lord who's king over the kings. He's in the middle, trying to do it on his own. That's a condemnation. Hope you get that. See, Pepin went to the Pope instead of going to God. See? He won at the Battle of Tours, and I'm sure that on the day that he won, because he really did believe, as far as we can tell, on the day that he won, I'm sure it's like, oh, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. But then there's an interval of like 20 years, and by the time we get to 749, it's kind of like, well, maybe I ought to be my own Lord, or maybe I ought to do something to hasten the Lord's action, because... You know, really, I've been running mayor of the palace for all these years. My dad, Charles Martel, is now dead, and I'm now mayor of the palace. And it seems kind of unfair, you know, because it's a really weak Merovingian rulers. So maybe I should do something. Yeah, and so what God is saying is, hi, you're doing something on your own, and therefore you're short, Pepin. <laughs> 
Because remember all those other times we saw all those other guys with Kai's? They were supposed to be Kai's heirs, and they were valid kings. This guy is usurping. Now, I happen to like Charles Martel. That's my part of the world. I happen to like Pepin the Short from what I know of him. But he is wrong here. He shouldn't have gone to the Pope to get his crown. He should have gone to God. So, he's not part of Curias. He's not part of Curion. He's not part of Basileus. He's not part of Basileon. He's Kai. That's it. It's just like any other king. And unlike the other ones that I brought up so far, this guy really is interested in the Bible. But he just didn't wait. <laughs> he should have waited if he had waited one more year. God might have crowned him himself. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so Pepin the Short is really short. He might have been physically tall. Because Charlemagne was. But he was sure short on doctrine there. Had some. But not quite to this level. So now they're fighting themselves, doing it themselves. Instead of God doing it for them. Now God has a purpose. You screw up and I screw up all day long. If you screw up, God will still make something good out of you. But, you know, it could have been better. You could have had a V8. Isn't that cute? So... The Pope, not God, the Pope crowns Pepin the Short, Kai of the Franks, not Kaiser, which in German means king. He's just Kai. He crowns Pepin the Short, Kai of the Franks. <laughs> he's just Kai. He's short, and he's short of Kaiser. He's just Kai. And that's going to plague his son and his son's sons in their whole reign is going to be plagued like that they're all going to be fighting with each other Pepin fought to get the crown from the Pope and all of his sons his grandsons and his great grandsons are all going to be doing the same thing which is what the Merovingians were doing with each other they were just greedy little guys trying to take over each other's kingdoms and that's what's going to be the legacy of Pepin the Short. Bunch of Kai's. And just in case you wondered, let's go to the next one. Okay? The son of Pepin the Short is named Charles. A.K.A. Charles the Great. And he is crowned elected, actually. Elected. Okay? Right here at Claytoy. Kai, Hoy, Met autoi kletoi kai eklektoi kai pistoi. Well, okay, but Charles isn't listed as pistoi. He's listed as called. And the idea of called means inheriting. So it's it's a sort of quasi election, but it's really kind of like raid. You're called as if you're elected, but it was already a predetermined thing because Pepin made sure that his son would get it. And actually, he 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 shares it with Carloman at first, but Carloman suddenly wants to go to a monastery, and Charles is left alone, the elect, and considered by those seeing him as Pistoi, but not quite considered that by Scripture. at 768 and he officially takes power okay so clay toy not curious <laughs> clay just the clay he's a clay and of course in French clay means key all right <laughs> I don't know I hope you're getting the whip because it's driving me crazy all right, so now we come down here. We're going to go a lot faster now because I'm not populating the events here because I don't know what to say about them yet. So all these events I'm saying nothing about. So, Carl, Charl, uh, Charlemagne is crowned by his fellows as King of the Franks. 
not by the Pope. Okay? Pope recognizes it, however, and during this period, there's a lot. The Lombards are trying to take over, and they're really nasty to the Pope, and they're expelling him and doing all this stuff. So the Pope says, Hi, remember when I crowned your dad, Pep in the Short? Okay, I sure could appreciate some help. So Charles sends down, and he's already consolidating the empire, and he has this really goofball. He's a charming guy. He has a lot of goofball ideas. Like, he's running into the Saxons, which are on the northern part of, you know, the northern part by the Baltic Sea. And he thinks, okay, well, you're Saxon and I took you over, so now you have to convert to Christ or I kill you. He thought that was a Christian thing to do. And just at this point, in 780, there's a cleric who comes from Northumberland, which I want to say is, is um, what is it? Northern Britain. The guy's name is Al Queen. And he does happen to know a good bit of scripture. <laughs> it's right here that he comes in. Okay. And he says, He says, See, Kai, Lege, Moi. And he says, Okay, well, I better put that in, huh? says he cannot kill those he conquers for not converting okay that's what Alcuin does he, he comes at a very propitious time a whole lot of lives were saved because that happened not that Alcuin was good on his doctrine all the time, but okay. Now Alcuin rescues. Alcuin says, "We'll leave out the rescue." To Charles, he cannot kill those he conquers for not converting to Christianity. Okay, so we do this, and now we do bam 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 bam. This is why I like word. You can't get these features in word of the, any later version than 203 today. Can't get it. Okay. Alcoin says to Charles, says. Okay. So that says, says, says. That's the way. See, because lege moi. Okay. He says to Charles, he cannot kill those he conquers for not converting. You can't do that, Charles. No, no. They have to have free will to convert to Christianity. You don't get. You don't act like the Muslims and convert them on the point of a sword. That's where Charles started out, and that's really important because when you read the letters of of Charles to his subjects, and he writes a lot. He goes for God in a big way, okay, and it starts right here. And he writes all these really pretty letters to them that you can read at Fordham. Let's see if I still got it. Um, history. Shaw history. And let's do um, Fordham. No, medieval. It's not on this one? Okay, how about Fordham? Do I have it at Fordham? It's at Fordham. Yeah, there we go. Um, let's try that one. Okay, yeah. Medieval source book. This is the great stuff. Alright. You go down to... Um, it's Fordham University. Hallsall is the name you want to remember. You don't need to remember this part. Just Fordham University Hallsall. And then you want the medieval source book. Okay, then you go down here. And you want selected sources. And then you're looking for... Uh, German. What the, no, we want the legal text. Give me the, 
Well, that'll do too. Wait a minute, let's go back. Okay. Um. I think it was full. Was it full text sources? Medieval legal history. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Okay, we got Roman law, but what you want here are are Germanic law. That's one of the things you want. And then I think it's in selected sources. Byzantium, Islam, Latin Christendom, early Germanic states. Here we go. Okay. Um, the early Germanic states, the Romanized Christian, Carolingians and after. Okay, you want that. And in the site here somewhere, I forget where it is, but I have indexed already to the, the letters of Charlemagne. They're just adorable. Okay. They're just adorable and they're at that same site at Fordham. But you can Google on this and find a lot of stuff. But Alcuin came into his life at that point. And there were a whole lot of Saxons who would have been dead if he hadn't. Okay. So by saying, hey, wait a minute, Charles. You can't just kill people. on the, You can't convert them on the edge of a sword. Okay. You got to have let them have a free right. Charles then does a 180 degree turn. And starting in 789, which is nine years after that, Ta Hudata, that's cute, Ha I days, Ta Hudata, Ta. See, and he's he's doing it on purpose. At first, I thought you can't do it this way, but you have to. Ta Hudata, A A days. That's seven. U A, just on the edge of point, and there's a reason for that. Okay. Just at that first syllable, and, and it's documented right here. It's in 15, 15 of Porne. Okay. All right. This is covering it. This is what I was talking about. All right. But there's there's other. This was the this is the Fordham link I was looking for. Okay. Where. Charles actually writes a bunch of words himself. That should be an A. Charles writes a bunch of words himself about how he wants Bible to be taught and they need to learn they need to learn how to read and write in order to learn Bible. And it's really important they learn Bible, so he demands that they all learn Bible. <laughs> okay. Because he's he's been given this job by God and he just can't stand it if they don't learn Bible. It's really very personal, okay? It's adorable and yet it's completely wrong because you can't order people to do that. You make it available and that's it. But, you know, this is basically where it starts. So the beginning, it's, it's Charlemagne's... And that's where it's wrong. He's forcing it. He's making it a law that they have to learn and teach Bible rightly in a certain way. And so in that way, he's kind of like Justinian. And he means well. I'm sure Justinian did too. Okay. I'm sure Justinian meant absolutely, you know, the best. But honey, you cannot force people to believe a thing. You cannot force people to believe a thing. You cannot force um, them to convert. Just can't. It's not right. That's why it's called, and that's why the note is on. See, what he starts, the waters, well, that always means different peoples, and, and he's going to find that later too, that you saw um, where the whore is sitting. But see, Charlemagne starts his education reform right there. 
is being classified by the Bible as whoredom because he's forcing it that unity of church and state that's what's wrong with it I don't care what your doctrines could be 100% right you don't force it you disclose it you talk about it you might even exhort you might argue but you don't try to force the other person you don't say well you must believe or die or you must study this Bible or die because what you do is you make the word then uh, hateful okay you make it hateful but that's what Charlemagne does so he's the latest incarnation of the poster boy whore before him it was Justinian for obvious reasons and while Charlemagne is more charming and he's less um, he doesn't say well you have to do everything I tell you as church no he's saying you have to learn Bible okay and teach it rightly but he doesn't he doesn't like enforce any kind of like I'm gonna run around and check you to see if you're teaching the Bible rightly because he doesn't claim to know it as well as he should he's saying that I'm gonna enforce on you the standard of learning it I'm gonna enforce on you the standard of getting educated in letters and math and a bunch of other things so that you can read it okay but you can't force people to even do that that's whoredom it's a nicer lesser uh, all the right reasons all the good intentions hoard them just like the Democrats are but still hoard them okay of course the, the GOP is far worse now Democrats used to be the bad guys but not anymore okay so all these harlot woman verses each have a reference like I just showed you for Charlemagne to a specific period of time that covers their that this word the length of it because these are considered to be key points in this history that's being unfolded with all of its sarcasm and wit but it's a pretty serious thing okay and Charlemagne in particular dear God when you read his letters you can tell he really loves God but he doesn't know anything so his love is like a puppy love his love is like a destructive love okay it's it's not it's not the kind of love that he really needs to have all right it just it shouldn't it shouldn't be like that you're not supposed to force somebody oops what happened here there we go it looks like the colors are wrong I guess not anyway so that's the problem with Charlemagne so it, it kind of reflects that going on see because now he's going he's, he's doing whore and now he's doing beast again okay and Charlemagne dies but, but this is somewhat complimentary and satirical Charlemagne now dies seven years later okay he's crowned in 800 uh, he dies a total of 14 years later but he dies seven years after this point and he dies right here he's just a ta he's just a definite article the end of a horn and, and the other irony here is he has he has ten kids at least ten kids who go on to be kings so and there are ten horns the ten horns that you saw even on the beast they will hate the harlot yeah and they they do that's exactly how the future unrolls which I'll cover in the next increment